Okay. No, okay, it shows me we're recording. Okay. So, hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to our virtual meeting tonight. Uh, due to some technical difficulties, we are having uh, some issues coming up um, with uh, Facebook Live, but this is being recorded and will be posted on our website. Um, first of all, I just, uh, as I call this meeting to order, I'd like to uh, make note that Councillor Wendy Sweet is not able to be with us tonight. Um, and also, there's, uh, there's one thing I wanted to talk about before we get into our meeting, and that is um, today was the first day to open the uh, voting on online voting or telephone voting. <clears throat> and, and it seems as though we had experienced some difficulties. Um, after Rachel did some digging, we found out that the number that was posted was an incorrect number. Um, that was done through uh, IntelliVote, the, the company that's um, performing this uh, for us. And um, uh, the community should see new information put in their mailboxes uh, that should be going in on Wednesday slash Thursday morning. Um, but if anybody would like to jot this number down, I do have the correct number, and that is 1-888-356-9965. That's 1-888-356-9965. That's how you access your telephone uh, voting. So, but if you didn't get that, you will be receiving something in the mail. Uh, I do want to make note this was not an issue with our staff, but an actual issue that uh, came from the company that we hired. So it has been a really great day. <laughs> um, Council, before you, uh, you have the agenda and we do need to make a motion for an approval of the agenda. Moved by a Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Clark. Thank you very much. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is passed. Uh, Council, you see the previous minutes of the regular Committee of the Whole, which was September 8th, 2020. Um, Council, have you noted any errors or, omiss or omissions in those previous minutes? If there's no errors or omissions, I do need approval of those minutes, please. Moved by Councillor Edshade, I need a seconder. Councillor Thompson seconded it. All in favor? Contrary minded? Okay, motion is passed. Under number four, under new business, um, and uh, we have actually three items up for discussion tonight. Um, under 4.1, we have Oxford Fire Department call stati statistics. Um, you can find that in your package. Um, I think it's important to note that the agreement that we had with the County of Cumberland um, happened in 2008, <clears throat> excuse me, and it will be due to be renewed in 2023. But we did take the opportunity to look at some fire department statistics um, and those statistics uh, included town versus county responses or town versus county calls. Um, and we broke it down into uh, three past years, 2018, 19, and 2020, what we have as of, you know, um, I think we've got it up until the July of this year. So um, I noted that um, in 2018, uh, total town calls were 30, total count county calls were 87. Um, in 2019, total town calls were 33 and total county calls were 53. And as of this year, we have total town calls at 15 and county calls at 45. So at this point, Council, I will um, open it up for any discussion that uh, we would like to have on that. Yes, Councillor Edshade. Um, I looked them all over also and then looked the agreement over and like where the agreement expires and there is actual language in there that 
you know, basically about increases and stuff like that. I don't think there's a whole lot we can do to try to get any more money out of them. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, I do believe that these numbers will become very important to us in 2023 when we start renegotiating a contract with them. Yes, I believe you're right. I think that um, it, it's good that we're we're keeping and, and thank you to our chief there and deputy for keeping those numbers for us because uh, once 2023 comes, uh, council will will have to negotiate. Now, I do believe that CPI is included in that. Is is it not, Rachel? It is. Right. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's always important to keep that your kind of eye on the prize. I'm not sure why in 2008 we agreed to a 15-year uh, agreement, but we did, and uh, we can't do anything in 2023 till 2023. Yes. Um, so I do know that there are other agreements in other jurisdictions that take into um, capital costs, and it, it tends to be a bit of a rolling average. We can't expect uh, outside organizations to maintain our fire hall and you know all of our volunteers, but some of the, the rolling capital that we need to fight fires outside of our town boundaries becomes an issue. And so we'll kind of flag this. Um, when we look at the stats, you know, it was 66% of the calls in 2018 in the county, but only 18% in 2019, and we're at about 33% now. From, from the entire fire budget that we have, um, the county funding gives us about 24% of our total fire funding. So it's, it's not really skewed, I think, I think it's okay at this point, and, and it's gone through CPI indexing over the course of, of the last uh, uh, almost 15 years. So certainly we'll keep that in mind as we go forward and negotiate. Okay, very good. Um, do any other councillors have some comments? Yes, Councillor Clark. Going forward, when you get into your next discussion, I would suggest that you uh, run a rolling average and that the percentages of calls be in the equation, even if you do it retroactively for the year before. So you may always be a year behind, but then at least you're uh, a little closer to the mark than you are right now. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. So, um, you know, uh, in 2023, this will once again be revisited and um, I won't be here. <laughs> okay, so we will move on to 4.2, the 2020 Christmas Parade. We're gonna have a discussion tonight regarding that. Um, I do believe, Councillor, I'd say, do you, did you want to talk on this? Sure. I, um, I brought it up to Rachel about the parade and stuff and just wanted to find out what the other units were doing as far as the parade and stuff. And mainly just so that we could make an informed decision. I, I believe that if the other two units aren't having parades, then there's probably not going to be enough floats kicking around the county to eat for us to even have a parade. If they are not having a parade, then I see a lot of people piling into our town to see our Christmas parade, which is something we probably don't want at this point. Um, with this COVID going on and everything. So I don't know what everyone else's feelings are. Um, I do think that moving forward, we need to develop a committee for the parade made up of community members instead of staff. Um, I think it's a community event. It's not, you know, it's not a staff event. And I think the community event is make, could be made up with counselors and community members. So that's just my two cents worth. Anybody else? I can uh, offer a comment. Uh, so the economic development officer and I have had a couple of chats around what we might see as some holiday celebrations in a physical distancing way. And, you know, last year we had the bargain bonanza. I think the past two years we've had the bargain bonanza. Um, and it usually coincides with when the parade is. And so we thought that we might look at perhaps the first Saturday in December and still have that kind of kick off our, our season of celebration. And then um, perhaps from there, if we could encourage businesses and residents 
to really decorate their properties and encourage families to get out and stroll around our community and take in the sites and uh, property owners could submit really festive pictures of their decorations or things that are meaningful to them over the holiday season that mm. we might be able to focus on that and and it would promote uh, certainly activity for people walking around and some family time and some community kindness and uh, just getting more people out and about and enjoying some of those sites so that's an idea that we've kind of played around with and if council is really comfortable with that or has any other suggestions we'll continue to work forward on doing something like that. Okay, thank you very much. Deputy Mayor? Uh, just a suggestion, some of the monies we'll be saving from not having the parade. <clears throat> Maybe we could put in a, a, a prize package for the best decorated home. We talked about we talked about that and we talked about the competition aspect and maybe some of the barriers that might be around that for decorating and costs and things like that. Um, it wasn't about uh, competition necessarily. It was about kindness and, and bringing out the best in our community. But um, we, we do have $1,000 in the budget for Christmas and that was primarily to put together and make sure that our decorations were up to snuff and, and um, just kind of putting a few extra things in place if, if we needed to. Okay, Councillor Ecce? Yeah, actually what you just said, Rachel, I was going to mention that maybe uh, we could put a little bit more money out this year to buy some more decorations to, to make the town look a little more Christmassy here. But, you know, we do have something for, for prize packages if, if council wants to go that route. Uh, I know that, that Ruthie and I did discuss it and we, we, we thought it might put up some barriers, but that's just our opinion. It doesn't have to be that way. Councillor? I, I have heard over the years while we were doing the parade that some people feel the competition aspect of, a, of the Christmas parade is not fair because they feel that some people have more resources to spend money on Christmas parades and floats and stuff like that. And it's just like everything else. Those with the most money usually win. And I, I think that for this year, especially, we should probably try to make our town look more like Christmas than have a competition on Christmas. Okay. That sounds good. So just, for the record, um, the town of Oxford will still be um, doing our usual Christmas displays. Hopefully this year it will might be more so than in previous years. Um, and we encourage uh, the community to do whatever they can, um, but probably more so spread a, spread a little kindness and, and food delivered to my house. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So anything else to um, talk about that? So so I think it's fair to say um, we are not going to have a Christmas parade this year. Other communities in the region are, are typically are not. not planning anything right now. Okay. Yes, Councillor? So Rachel, maybe you, this week or over the next couple of weeks, I guess you, I mean, I'm sure you and Ruthie are going to do a splash about what we want to do and everything, but just make people know that we're not getting rid of Christmas, I guess. Yeah. Um, and the parade and that it will be back next year. Yeah. So for sure. provided we get rid of this pandemic. Yeah. We wanted to have this discussion with council first to make sure that we were all on the same page and didn't go forward with something that, uh, that was out there. Uh, Councillor Colburn, did you have something you wanted to say? No. Not at the present time. Okay. All right, um, under new business, uh, 4.3, uh, the Great Trail. We're going to have a discussion on that. In your packages, you'll see that um, we had a nice package delivered to us uh, regarding the trail and uh, some of the things that um, the committee sees that could, could be happening. Um, I know... Uh, Councillor Ed Shade, that you're involved and have done a lot of volunteering uh, in this. And I don't know if you have any added comments to this. Sure, I do. I always do. Um, <laughs> no. well, I, I, con I was contacted by Greg Nix last week about this project that they're looking at doing, about getting this trail up in shape and everything like that. Um, I, I believe it's the Trans Canada Trail 
association or something, they want to put like an area in front of the four wheelers and uh, like a staging area. Um, they they want to do it where it has the most economic impact for the community. Of course, everyone sees Irving, Tim Hortons, and the Park View as the great economic activity in in Oxford. Um, myself, I see it. I think the staging area, and I would fully support a staging area over in South Oxford, um, just because it would allow people to come through our town and maybe stop and support some of the businesses downtown while they're on their way over there to uh, get a four wheel or, you know, unload their bikes or, or walking or whatever they're going to do. Um, I think that anyone that wants to go to those other businesses in town, the trail takes them right to it. Um, so I, Myself, if we were going to do anything and support this, I would recommend that we support a, a um, trailhead in South Oxford just to get the exposure through the town and everything like that. Uh, Councillor, wasn't that something that we discussed probably 10 years ago? And, and um, that's where the trailhead was going to be? That's what we probably, yeah, we discussed it. But I, it, they, these people or these, this group here, has their own agendas. Um, I think we need to steer them in the right direction a little bit. And if we can make a case to them that, you know, we see the most economic impact by having it on that side of town and everything. Um, yeah, I mean, they have to get other the other businesses to agree to give them an area to have a trailhead and all this stuff. But mm -hmm. I just see that over there, if we, we, we own the land, um, I did talk to Greg about like, you know, putting up some fencing and stuff along the back of the, the complexes over there and, and things like that, but they're looking at like putting pea gravel down or crusher dust down from here to Tatamagush or from here to Picto actually, and um, all that kind of stuff. But I, I do see it as a big spin, like a benefit to Oxford to support it, but I really do believe that we need to support it on the other side of town. Okay. Do we have any other comments from council? Just had one comment if yep. I could. Um, and so that goes to the idea that we had eventually when we get some funding to put a, a kiosk, an information kiosk over at that trailhead. That's where we were going to place that uh, information. And so we can um, put information for residents, but we can also put information for travelers and people who are using the trail. So that would fit ultimately into the longer term plan, which would be really great. Yeah, and I'm thinking that we should like get, make that be known to this year trail association. But it's Cumberland Trails, I guess, that are spearheading it through Trans Canada Trails. So I think we need to sit down with Greg and, and their their organization and, and let them know how we feel about it and why we feel that way about it, and then what other things that we can do to support it. Would you like a, a letter drafted to start that process? I would, yeah. We'll, we'll draft that and uh, for for the mayor's signature and get that moving along. Okay, that sounds good. And I do know that um, when you look over in that area, uh, we certainly have the ability to do that with the kiosk and that center location where the trail, where the uh, rail tracks used to be, but also on the other side of, of the road there, the town of Oxford does own that land. Um, and uh, what used to be an old garage at one time, um, there's nothing that we can uh, physically do with that land, but um, I think it, we could all, we could use it for a parking area, uh, an access or excess parking area, um, and uh, that would be another way to be able to utilize it. And we would certainly have lots of parking there. So I believe that you're right. It, it is a, is a perfect location in order to do that. Okay, um, council, that was the end of our new business. We're gonna move into correspondence now. Excuse uh, me, Your Worship, can I ask a question? Sure, sure can. Sorry, I hit my hand up, you didn't see me, oh, I guess. Oh, I didn't, no. Uh, that trail thing, when are they expecting you to do that work and are they expecting funding from the town of Oxford and if so, how much? Uh, that, that, you know, we're gonna just open the conversation now and, you know, we will, um, we'll be finding out that, you know, in the future, as I have found, things don't take months, they take years, so. Um, so but, probably not until spring. Uh, I, I yeah, have no idea. We'll see what, what happens with the letter. Okay. All right, anybody else? 
Okay. Uh, under correspondence, uh, Council, you have you will have noticed that uh, we have a um, a letter for your information from uh, Minister of Justice on the policing review that we had. Um, one of the things that I noted in there is that um, you know we they agreed to the fact that uh, we could go down by one member that it wasn't necessary, but. Um, Minister Fury stated that that wouldn't be happening until there was an actual vacancy. Um, and uh, anyway, I'm going to open that for discussion and see what council's thoughts are on that. No thoughts? Okay. So that is for your info. Oh, sorry, council or deputy mayor. Sorry, I'm missing everybody's hand tonight. That's I was a little late. Um, we put a lot of time and effort into this process and whatnot, and there's no indication from Minister Fury at the start that there would be any type of delay. I so I, guess I have to say that I'm disappointed at his decision to wait until there was a vacancy. So, uh, you know, I think as, as a town, we should let them know that either through Donna or whoever, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be in verb verbally or in writing, uh, because uh, for all the delays they're, they're giving us, it's costing us money. Uh, and not costing them really much at all. So uh, just um, disappointed that they've made that decision. Yes. And not only that, it uh, doesn't appear to be, or I didn't see anything stated in there about retroactive, um, that we're going back now into when, when was that decision made? In February? Uh, we're now into October. We have not seen one bit of savings at all. Uh, we're still paying 38% of our budget into that, whereas the rest of Nova Scotia is paying, the majority of the rest of Nova Scotia is paying 31%. Um, it was never done fair, and yeah, it needs to happen. The, That's why I changed it. Okay. Go ahead. Me? Yep. The reality of it is, is we started this about three or four years ago, and then we decided to side up with the county on it. And it's taken this long to get this far. So I agree with Rick. We need to do something about it. I mean, there, there's no reason for this to take this long. No. Um, I don't know if uh, council, just one moment, Rachel, if council also noticed in the very bottom of the letter, it states the other recommendations in the policing re review will also be pending until an updated crime stats are received, including the revi revised billing based on calls for service and the closure of the Pugwash de de detachment. Rachel, I didn't understand what that meant. So a couple of things, clarification, and I, I know that this council initiated a review back in 2017, 16, 17. Uh, unfortunately, that just got dropped um, and, and didn't really go anywhere. So uh, I, I don't think it's fair to reflect it on the current people who are working on this project now, because that was a completely different thing. Uh, to the deputy mayor's point around passing the message on, uh, when Donna Dewars did call me to tell me about this, uh, prior to the letter coming forward, I did uh, express the fact that I suspected that council would be very disappointed around the delay. Um, that we've been waiting, that we went through the process, that we jumped through all of the hoops that justice required of us. Um, and now we're being told that we have to have at least one or two more years of stats to make it current. So um, I did already express that, but we can certainly formalize it in a letter back to the minister. And I indicated to her that once we had a formal letter from the minister, that the council, my council would probably want to formalize uh, a response in a letter. And so we can draft that and I can pass it around to council to make sure that it is um, reflective of the, the opinions before it gets sent out for sure. Um, uh, and and sure. Rachel does any of this depend on you know what happens in the county because they were part of that review or can we do this just as the town of Oxford? So the the we can we can state our our uh, opinion for sure, and we can copy the county on it. I mean, it's our opinion and it's our opinion. That doesn't change anything. Um, so the last paragraph deals with when, when the town of Oxford came to the full conclusion that they, that we wanted to maintain the RCMP as our policing force, uh, we took the 
uh, uh, took the side of Cumberland County who said, we'd like to choose option three out of the policing report that was finalized and presented to us. And option three included reprofiling one regular member to a public service employee and taking away two other members and closing the pug wash station and, and moving the resources to Oxford. Do, like that was all, that was all part of that option right. three. And so none of that will be implemented outside of reprofiling uh, one member to the public service employee position based on a vacancy until the crime stats for 2018 and 19 have been completed. They won't do a one-off service adjustment until the whole thing is done. So essentially, we followed all procedures that we were supposed to do. They agreed with what we were saying, but yet it still isn't going to happen in a nutshell. Well, I don't know that you can say that they agreed with what we were saying. That's why they're asking for more information. They see the process. They supported the process. They understand what went, ha went on. Um, for the minister, as it's been explained to me, for the minister to be able to make a fully informed decision around public safety as it relates to policing in the Cumberland region, he would like to be able to see not only the 2017 statistics for crime calls, he would like to see the 2018 and 19. There's a trend there, obviously. There are statistics there that would be very important for him as, as the minister to be able to make an informed decision on reducing the number of police members that we would have in the region specifically. Okay. Yes, Councillor Ochey. So they're looking for 2018 and 2019. Is that correct? Yes. This is 2020. Are they like waiting for more crime to happen back in the time zone or what? Well, that's something that we can certainly, they we won't have the full year. And when my discussion with Donna, she indicated because they're doing a couple of other reviews right now and they have one analyst that can do all of this they expect that they can do the crime stats. It won't take them very long, but they'll have it done um, within this fiscal year, within this calendar year. So November, December, they should have that information completed and they wouldn't have all of those stats for 2020 to go right back to the minister. So are we able to ask for this to be retroactive back or are we gonna to have to pay the whole bill this year? That's certainly an ask. Okay. There's no guarantee. Okay. All right, <clears throat> Deputy Mayor. Uh, so I worked for government for 17 years uh, and I was in senior positions with economic development and, and TIR. Uh, ministers don't make decisions on their own normally. No, decisions are made based on staff input and recommendations and briefing notes. So staff can move this up to the minister for a decision. The only thing that I can see that could be interrupting the whole process is if they're getting feedback from the other side about not wanting to do it and the, any connections that might be there with Minister Fury. So uh, again, I state my point. I'm very disappointed. This, is, this was a, a well thought out and well run process. Uh, we did it in conjunction with the county. Uh, and I really think that staff have to push the minister to make a decision on this. So that's my final word. I'll just go on mute. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Anybody else have anything they want to say on the policing review? Okay, we're going to move on to um, more correspondence that we received during uh, or about the um, Cumberland Public Libraries. Uh, there's been a few bylaw changes there. Um, there will be, uh, and for us, it doesn't really change so much because we have always had one rep from our council that sat on that, but um, they will keep that in place. Also that uh, there'll be two now coming from the province. So our new mayor will need to know that uh, somebody has to be, a counselor has to be appointed to the library board. Um, did anybody have anything that they wanted to talk about with the library board? Okay, very good. So that was for your information. 
So um, before we end our meeting tonight, um, both Rachel and I had the opportunity last Wednesday to be on a Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities call. And um, the president, uh, Mayor Pam Mood, shared with us um, a video that was uh, done by the province um, in conjunction with the Community Spirit Award. And um, it has to do with Nova Scotia, um, Nova Scotia during the pandemic um, and the tragedy that our province went through. Uh, it was a very touching video and um, both Rachel and I decided that we thought it would be great to be able to share what we saw with you folks and that we also post it uh, for the rest of the community to see. So right now, Rachel's going to um, just kind of make the screen bigger so everybody can see it. And after the video is over, I will be calling for adjournment. I'm going to try to share the screen. And hopefully this will work. And if everybody would just mute themselves. We need volume. Just wait one second. I'm understanding that there isn't a lot of volume, so I'm going to try to increase the volume. Perhaps it's on my machine that I need to do that. So before we get too far, we'll try that. Yeah.
Okay. Can you make it full screen again or us full screen again? I'm just going to show the presentation from uh, the community presentation. That's okay. All good. Oh, okay. Um, did anyone else have problems with volume? I didn't. I couldn't hear anything. I didn't have any. No. Okay. Um, can can oh, you yeah. share that on Facebook or something? The link to that video, yeah. Rachel. Just yeah. the video itself. Or is, yeah. is it a separate video or do you have to watch the whole presentation and everything? We've got the mark where the video starts so we can we can make that public. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because I'm I'm kind of thinking if I couldn't hear it, then what we recorded wouldn't be heard either. So I right. don't know. Be so before, okay, before, we'll before excuse me, Your Worship, I'm sorry to interrupt, but before we adjourn, I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask. Sure. If I could. Rachel, who's supposed to clean the grease out of the fryers at the arena? Do you know? I have fryers, no idea. The fryers are still full of grease from last year, last winter. Okay. Whoever used them last. We, we, we didn't do a full clean out because nobody was in the arena. We had to send people home. Yeah, but somebody should be able to take the fat out of the fryers. Good Lord, yeah. it's been there since last winter. We anyway, will... Whoever responsibility it is, I don't know. Anyway, and the other question is, what, I can't find it in my notes, I know I got it here somewhere, so what did we decide on the tape at the arena? Did we decide to postpone that for another year? No, it should be done. So it should be all done. Should be all done now? Well, the guy who was doing it was coming from New Brunswick, so he was having challenges coming across when the COVID restrictions were in, but uh, right. I believe that he came in, and uh, I'll double check, but I thought we had issued a check, so. Okay, thank you. I thought that, but then I didn't think it was done. Well, we had we had paid in advance for some of his materials because they were special orders. So I said, we'll go ahead and get the job done because we'd already yeah. partly paid for it. Okay. All right. Okay. You're welcome. Um, all right. I do need a motion for adjournment, please. Move to adjourn. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. See you in two weeks' time.